Welcome to the show. This is the Paul Stainton Peterborough thingy video thing. Um, it's a new show that wants to talk about Peterborough and make a noise for the city. We don't think enough people are doing that and that's why we formed a new channel called the Peterborough Broadcasting Company or PBC for short. There's a lot of frustration out there that a lot of the broadcasting companies have moved out of the city and I know a lot of people have gone in touch with me certainly on social media and said why can't you do something. So this is our attempt to give the city a voice, bring all the disparate bits of it together uh, through the power of a video thingy. We're just a small band of people, we've got no money, we've got a very select audience for our first show, and when I say select, I mean, nobody would select them, but I did anyway. Um, we're gonna try and film this show at a different local venue in Peterborough every month, and we're gonna try and tackle a major topic. And today's topic, Please don't all boo at once, because it is quite topical. Brexit and what it means for Peterborough. <laughs> what a day, eh? What a day. We're, f we're filming this on the day that the government have done a deal, which is worse than the deal we had if we stayed in and gives complete control, as I understand it, to the EU. So we may never get out. Let's go to the streets. Let's find out what the people on the streets think. And... A lot of people fed up with Brexit, so I thought I would give people a proper, proper choice. They could talk about Brexit or breakfast. If I wanted to talk to you about Brexit or breakfast, which do you want to talk about? Breakfast. Breakfast? Yeah. All right, what do you have for breakfast? What did I have? Some wheat toes. Wheat toes? Yeah, with too much sugar. Is Brexit not sexy? Brexit, I'm not really up on any politics to be no. fair, but Brexit itself, I'm just like, I'm not really clued up. I don't, I've not had the information that I, I kind of need. I don't really follow it anyway, but um, in terms of information, I don't really know anything much about it. I know that we kind of leave in the EU or something. Well, we're we're definitely gonna, leaving, yeah. yeah. Well, we are. It's definitely going to happen. It depends here. whether we're leaving in a, in a chauffeur driven limousine or we're involved in a car crash. Right. Yeah. I'm fucking. I'm sorry, my language. I'm, oh, veering, no, yeah, I'm veering towards uh, probably car crash, to be fair. Can you just say that to the camera? I'm probably veering towards more of a car crash than uh, leaving in a limousine. Yeah. I definitely think we're going to leave in a car crash, car crash, car crash, car crash, rather than a limousine, to be sure. <laughs> Maybe we'll just leave in like a skip toad by a tow truck instead of even a car. Yeah, we, we're, we're leaving in a bad way. Are you just sorting your bike out? Yeah. You gotta be careful, aren't you? You gotta be careful. Yeah. Can I get you to come over here? Is that yeah, okay? We're, we're, just gonna, yeah. we're just gonna look in there. That's it. Yeah. You wave. Oh, hello. 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 Um, if I was to say to you, you know, what do you want to talk about? Brexit or breakfast? What were you saying? Brexit. Brexit? Yeah. Why? Why is it so important? Because they're useless. We should not have to change. No way, no way. I think Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn ain't doing the job they should be doing. What, who do you think is going to deal with it best? Is it the Tories, Labour, Lib Dem, or are they all useless? They're all useless. They're all useless. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, when you, when you go on the streets of Peterborough that you meet such characters. Um, only in Peterborough, I think. Um, only in Peterborough. But, you know, that's the point of the show, that we're going to give people in Peterborough a chance to have their say. And don't worry... You guys in the audience will be having your say a little bit later on. Looking forward to it? Been on camera? Yeah? Yeah? As long as you don't slag the show off. That, that's, that's all that matters. Um, now, you'd be pleased to know that there are no politicians on the show today. Because I think they've done enough, don't you? No. I think there, there has never been a more inept bunch of people running this country in opposition. They've had two years to sort it out, and it's a mess, isn't it? A complete mess. So there won't be any politicians on this show. However, there will be four people who we've already filmed from Peterborough City Council representing the different um, parties. Uh, and what I thought would be interesting would be just to see what these politicians actually know about Brexit and whether they actually even know what their own party stands for. So what I've done is I've gone to Labour, the Lib Dems, UKIP and the Tories and got a councillor from Peterborough City Council to take on the 10 second challenge. Now you're going to hear from them all throughout the show. Uh, we're going to kick off with Labour and councillor Ed Murphy. Ed, Ed is Ed Murphy. Who do you represent Ed? Labour and Corporatist. Where about, whereabouts in Peterborough? Ravensthorpe in Peterborough. Ravensthorpe in Peterborough. Okay, what we're going to do today is a little social experiment. We're going to try and get 
uh, members of each of the different parties at Peterborough Town Hall to explain their party's policy on Brexit in 10 seconds, okay? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Simply, so we can all understand. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Is that okay? Yeah. 10 seconds. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Labour's policy on Brexit is still developing. We want a general election so that we can negotiate a way of leaving properly. Though there are views in the Labour Party that we should remain. No, no, not developing, not, not developing. Six months to go, Ed. What's the policy? What's the policy? The pol the Three, two, one. The policy is that we want to negotiate a better deal or we want to remain. Ed Murphy, Labour, do we think he understood what his party's policy was? No, he hadn't got a clue. He hadn't got a clue. Uh, well, it, it, it's still developing. The worry is he's in my ward, that's what worries me. He's in your ward? Well, yeah. oh, okay, well. <laughs> Bless him, Ed. I mean, to be fair to the politicians, I didn't tell them what we were going to talk about until I turned the camera on. But they should know their own party's stance, shouldn't they, on Brexit. Uh, so that was Labour. Um, Later on in the show, we're going to hear from UKIP, we're going to hear from the Lib Dems, and we're going to hear from the Tories. And let me tell you, the Tory councillor is the fastest talker in the West. He talks really quickly. Really quickly. Right there. All right, whose phone's that? Mine. Whose phone? It's here. Name and shame. <laughs> phone has gone off during the recording of the show. Please give your name. Theresa May. <laughs> <laughs> Theresa May. <laughs> now, uh, more 10 second challenges to come during the show, but now um, every month we're going to have a very special guest, somebody who's done something amazing for the city of Peterborough, something um, incredible that's made the city better, greater, um, and please welcome to the show the one, the only, Brian Pierce, MBE, everybody! <laughs> Brian, take a few, take a few. Oh, no, no, no. No, come on, seriously. That well done. Yeah. Brian Pierce, MBE, MBE. You've got two MBEs, really, haven't you? Well, we've got one for the uh, volunteering, the Queen's Award for volunteering, yeah. And then a couple of weeks later, they gave me one for myself to keep. Oh. <laughs> He's got left, yeah. To have and to hold. <laughs> From this day forward? Yeah. Are you coming on to me? Um, <laughs> MBE for services um, to? Environment and community. Yeah, and for those people that don't know, Brian has created what they call the Rail World Wildlife Haven. And that's where we are today, in this very building, in the middle of this fantastic oasis, right slap bang in the middle of Peterborough, just around the corner from the posh ground. You've turned some old coal yards. Not just me. No, but your vision wasn't it? Your dream. Your dream. Nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the help of hundreds and thousands of volunteers and hours and hours of their time and yours, you've turned this oasis into a reality. What, when you, what, 25 years ago, when you had the dream, what did people say to you? Uh, I was crazy. Um, have you got any money? I said, no. Have you got anybody to help you? I said, no. Well, how are you going to do it then? I said, I'm going to get people to help me. I'm going to ask them. And uh, we thought it would take a year two years tops, but we never had any money, we've still not got any money, but we've built this centre here which took us 19 years to build. The wildlife haven has took 25 years to build. We won 250 trees in clear up a grot spot. We've restored old antique aqueducts which would have otherwise been unceremoniously sort of scrapped and cut up. So we've saved a lot of Victorian heritage uh, from Cambridgeshire really. and. Uh, we're quite proud of it and uh, we love it when people come here. If you look through our visitor book, you'll find 900 thank yous and pleased and they love the place. So that's sufficient reward for me. And as you can tell, Brian can tell the hind legs off a donkey. So you know how he got the gear, you know. He used to be a DJ, didn't you, at Annabelle's years ago in Peterborough, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that, is some, you, that is some years ago. That is some years ago. <laughs> You're too young. <laughs> some of you are too old. Um, thank you. <laughs> I was, I was looking at you. Yeah, yeah. It's the grey hair that gives it away and the, uh, the widening girth, I think, of, of people. Brian. Um, so, I mean... <laughs> so, it's, it's an amazing place. If you've never been, uh, you need to come and have a look around here and, and spend some time 
you can spend some time in the woodland by the waterfall come into this amazing center uh, and just it, it's it's incredible how the world sort of stops when you come here even though you're in the middle of the city everything just stops and You've, you've had so many people help out, haven't you? Local companies as well. It's been absolutely brilliant, really. I mean, the wildlife haven idea started because I worked at Perkins and they built some wildlife havens and I thought how nice they were. And obviously because of security and health and safety reasons, they couldn't have school children and schools coming around there. Even they do have specific visits, but it would be continuous like it is here with school schools enjoying the place and getting into nature we you know they need to love the world because we've got a long way hopefully to survive and keep this place going love the world that is a mantra for Theresa May and Donald Trump right there love the world love each other come together and we can all do it together and and it really is I've been down here and I've seen companies down here I've seen organizations charities uh, and everybody falls in love with the place but it takes hours and hours of your time so when does, well, the, when does the family see you? What, what does your wife I think? Know, I mean, uh, is she sat at home with her legs crossed? No, no, no. I mean, that is a problem. Easy, really. yeah. easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> Fingers crossed is what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a problem. And, you know, uh, I'm similar age to Prince Charles. He's two months older than me. And, and the reality... What are you on? Youth pills? Look at you. No, what are well, you taking? 17 January. But, <laughs> no. But the reality is that... Um, you know, 60, 70 hours a week, so don't retire, guys, because you never stop. I mean, to me, it's just like fishing or playing golf. I don't play golf, I don't go fishing, I don't follow Man United or Posh. Oh. You know, I just... No I booing, this. stop booing, please. I do this, and, and, and I enjoy it. I enjoy people working together, and it really upsets me sometimes when you hear all this cross-party politics. I couldn't care less whether you're conservative, you're liberal, whatever you are. You know, it wants to be for the betterment of everybody. And, and I just don't agree with all this cross-party politics when they start arguing is Conservative, is Labour. I couldn't care what they are. <laughs> he nearly did. He nearly did, folks. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> he did on the way over the bridge. <laughs> and I told him not to. Uh, so you, you think we'd be better off with a coalition of the willing, do you? You don't realise what a fabulous country we've got here. I mean, I've been fortunate enough not to go on holiday to these places, but I've worked all over the world in South America, Central America, Africa, Asia. We have got a fabulous country. You go to Sudan and, and places like Ethiopia, Cuba, you know, Central America, Guatemala. You don't realise what those people would love about this place. And it's the fact that we've got a stable government. OK, you take the mickey about them and this, that and the other. Me? But the reality is we have got a stable government. And a lot of these countries haven't. And that is what you need more than anything. It's all right people complain about this, complain about that. People complain about everything. And the reality is they don't realise what they've got because they've never been to these places and experienced what these other poor people have got. You know, you spend a couple of weeks in Ethiopia, you spend a couple of weeks in Guatemala, uh, Colombia, places like that. You just do not realise what a wonderful city we've got here and what a wonderful country we've got as well. Come on, for Peterborough. <laughs> and, that's, and that's why Peterborough needs a voice like this, you know, for great people like Brian and, and others like him to inspire others and shout about the good things we do in the city. Brian Pierce, everybody, we're going to have a chat uh, more to Brian in a little while. Uh, but we ought to get back to the 10 second challenges, didn't we? I mean, who wants to hear another one? Another one? Yeah, yeah. Should, we get the, should we get the Tory boy on? Should yeah. we get him on? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, his name is uh, Scott Warren. Uh, he's a councillor, Peterborough City Council. And just a word of warning here, he talks very, very quickly. In three, two, one, go. So what Brexit will get is delivered actually the Northern Ireland borders, given the soft borders, actually freedom of movement, and actually freedom of people in the area, so. So, what, what else? I mean, you know, what, what if we crash out? Have you got a plan for that? Do you think? Is it, is we've, got a plan? Plan, we've got a new deal plan and all that, so there'll be a plan for the no deal and all that. 
I mean, because obviously there's going to be problems with EU don't want us to come out, so there will be a plan for no deal. Um, won't be ideal, but I think that what they're going to do is deliver what they're going to get because no deal is not going to be good for the UK or going to be good for Europe. Yeah, but, but we're effectively putting sanctions on ourselves by coming out, aren't we? Which is a bit it's, of a... It's a bit of a nightmare and all that, but, you know... Would you rather we stayed in? I'd rather stay us out because the thing out. is... Out. Out. I'm out. out. Yeah. Because the thing is, in game, we need to put sanctions on ourselves. We need to make sure that we deliver what we need to... What the people voted for at the end of the day. The people voted for us out. We've got to deliver it. If we don't deliver sanctions, then we don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't vote for a car crash, though, did we? We didn't vote for a car crash. Um, it wasn't kind of ideal, but the thing is, you know, we never know what we're going to truly get. But I think in the end, it'll all work out and it'll be smoothed out. I think a lot of it is all just the hype around it. You never quite see what's going to happen behind the scenes. And I think at the end of the day, when we come out in April, I think you'll see it all settle down and it'll be in dust and dust. A so. bit longer than 10 seconds, but it was all right. Yeah. It's good. Cheers for that. Pretty no good. problem. Yeah. Conservative councillor uh, Scott Warren, Peterborough City Council. Do we think he knows what the Conservatives really stand for? No. Does he understand Brexit? No. no. What about we have to put sanctions on ourselves? Were you, were you concerned slightly by that comment? Yeah. Very much. Yeah. What about we're going to deliver what you're going to get? We're going to deliver what you're going to get. It's very succinct, isn't it? And very to the point, although I have no idea what he meant by that. But, Scott, thank you for taking part in the show. Really appreciate that. And we've got more 10 second challenges to come. Um, Brian Pierce is still with us uh, from Rail World. And thanks for letting us use your venue uh, to do the first ever Paul Stainton Peterborough. The, well, <laughs> the first show. We had to come to the epicenter and a man with two MBEs. Or a place with two MBEs. Um, I, I don't want you to get into politics. And I don't want you to get into um, Brexit too much because we've got a lot to talk to you about. But equally, you touched on some of the places you've been in the world. Um, d does it worry you that we're, we're effectively becoming the first country ever to knowingly vote to put sanctions on ourselves by coming out of the EU and, and maybe accepting this deal where we never actually get out of the EU. Does it worry you that we're, we're partitioning ourselves? You know, do, you mentioned earlier living together, one big happy family and loving each other. Would well, you rather that we were staying? That, that, that's my dream, really. I mean, I don't think we should have even had a referendum in reality. Careful, you might get lynched with this crowd. Yeah, I may do, but, you know, <laughs> I've got to speak honestly. Well, and, so you uh, should. We should all be honest, shouldn't and, we? And, yeah. that, and, that's, and that's what it's about, really. Have they, have they been honest with us? Do you think any of the politicians knew what the I heck think, they were I doing? Think, I think it's easy to decry people from the outside. We don't know what's been going on. I mean, I came in the other day and a volunteer said to me, what time do you call this? <laughs> and I said, I said, I'm sorry, you, you've been here three times. <laughs> you know, you've got no idea what I do in the 60, 70 hours a week. I said, I've been doing emails before I came in here this morning. And yeah. I've been here 25 years, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You try not to say things like that. It is so difficult sometimes. You've got to zip your mouth, really. Otherwise, you'd fall out with everybody and nobody would do anything. Don't forget, these people don't have to be here. Is it time? Do, 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 we, do we trust the politicians to actually sort this out at some point? Or do you think they've, they've, they've lost their chance here? Should we call in the professionals? Da -na -na, na -na -na, na -na 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 -na. Bodie and Doyle, somebody like that. I, I, I don't know whether I trust them to sort it all out now. We're all in it together. We're all in it together. We should all of shall I say, yeah. Good, good. Well, let, let's find out what the Lib Dem councillor on Peterborough City Council uh, thinks about Brexit. Um, he was given 10 seconds to try and explain his own party's stance. Do we think he'll succeed? No. no. no? Oh, let's see. Hey, then, right. Give him your name. Tell him who you represent. That's what you need to represent um, Paston and Walton as a Lib Dem council. Okay, a little bit of an experiment going on here, okay? Ten seconds. Where do the Lib Dem stand on Brexit? Brexit, are you ready? Yeah. All right, <laughs> people at home want to know. Yeah, a lot of confusion. Can you do this in ten seconds? I can do it. Simply. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need to understand. No acronyms. That's fine. All right? Three, two, one, go! As Lib Dems, we believe we should stay in Europe. There's no way we should go along with Brexit. A second vote is vital. People weren't told the truth previously. They need to know the truth now. They know the full story behind it, and they'll vote sensibly. So stay. A little bit longer than 10 seconds there, I see. Come on, you're, you're a little bit of a DJ. You know what 10 <laughs> seconds is, don't you? A little intro you talk over. All right. Come on, get, get, oh, we've got a road sweeper. How long was it in? Just get a shot of the road sweeper, will you? Come on, come on, come on. Trying to film here. Um, how long was I then? 
How long were you? Yeah, you know, oh, like 15, 16 oh. seconds, something like that. You know, it's too long. 10 seconds, all right? You ready? Come on, come on. Yeah. Three, two, one, go! Lib Dem policy, we stay in Europe. Pick what's in that the truth in the first place. If we can vote again tomorrow, I'm sure that'd be the case. So we need to stay. Second vote. Second vote? Yes. Second We've already vote. voted. We voted, but everyone didn't know the truth about the whole story and the full ins and outs of it, the full implications. Now they know a bit more about it, they will vote with knowledge, uh, not with uh, misled notions. Yeah. Do you think if there was a vote tomorrow, we'd all vote to stay? You'd still get your leaves, but I think the majority would swing it this time around, yes. We'd stay. I see. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Say bye-bye. Yeah. See you later. Ta-da. That's very good. Well if there was another vote tomorrow, uh, a C from the Lib Dem said we, we'd all vote to stay, would we? No. No, uh, okay, he's got that wrong then, obviously. Did, did, do we, he, he did know what his stance was on Brexit though, didn't he? He, 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 was, he was probably the clearest so far, wasn't he? He was in control of what he was saying and everything He was in control of his mouth, wasn't he? Which is, you know, which is a prerequisite when you're talking, really, to camera or to anybody. Um, at least he had, he had a hold of what he was saying. And um, one more of those to come, uh, we'll hear from... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, we'll hear from UKIP shortly as well and whether they can explain their party's stance on Brexit in just 10 seconds. I do help him a lot in this, I have to say, the UKIP man. I, I really do help him with a few tricks of the trade, uh, which includes thinking of me naked, um, which is obviously a beautiful thing. Um, Brian, before we let you go, um, this place is amazing. It's, it's a real testament to you, the Rail World Haven. And, um, on behalf of Peterborough, I think I, I should say thank you to you, thank you to all the volunteers that have built this amazing oasis, uh, because it'll be here for generations to come. Hopefully. So your MBE is very well deserved. Um, I, I, I can't believe you're not f fetid across the city and, and red carpets rolled out for the work you've done. Um, is this it or do you have a plan to do more in the future? No, we, uh, we dream of uh, raising four million pounds to build a, an earth centre to highlight all the problems that are going on in the world. That's what I'd like to see governments tackle. Um, you know, we should be more together rather than split up. I hate the idea of of Scotland going independent. I, I just think it's a retro step. We need to be all working together for a common goal. We all want a better world. Great Britain. And if we all did a bit together, we'd, we'd get that way. But fragmentation is not a solution. And the Earth Centre, I mean, is that is that liable well, the, to happen soon? The or? Earth Centre, or as, believe it or not, I was talking to uh, Prince William last week. <laughs> <laughs> Must drop that in. Willie, you talked to Big him, Willie, did you? Big Willie style. I told him that I met his mum and I was on a high for four days. I will bet you were. Uh, you can you can take <laughs> you can take the lad out of Peterborough. You can't take the DJ out of the lad. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, he said, I don't think you get four days out of me. You might get one if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, when you finish this uh, centre. My father and I will come and open it for you. Wow. So I said, well, that is absolutely incredible. And I've since wrote to Prince Charles and said to him, can you help me design it? All the concerns that you've got about the environment in the world. Can we get together and discuss what we should have in this centre? And then we could even call it the Prince of Wales Earth Centre. Wow. Wouldn't that be brilliant? Wouldn't that be brilliant? Hey? Wouldn't that be brilliant? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Brian Pierce, the man whose vision brought this place uh, to life and made it happen, Rail World Wildlife Haven. Give him a round of applause. Thank you, Brian. Um, so, we've got one more uh, 10 second challenge. Can the man from UKIP on Peterborough City Council explain his party's stance on Brexit in just 10 seconds? I'll give you a clue. No. <laughs> Hi John, Hello. you're not a bit dirt on you. Oh, sorry yeah. about that. Uh, tell them who you are, John. I'm John Whitby, I'm the UKIP councillor for Flatman and Stand Ground Wards on okay. Peterborough City Council. So what we're doing, John, today is a little social experiment. Uh, we're trying to bring a bit of clarity to the Brexit argument. Can you tell us UKIP's policy on Brexit so that people can understand? Can you do it simply for me in 10 seconds? Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. UKIP's policy is exactly the same as it's always been, to leave the EU completely with or without a deal because even a no deal on WTO terms is better than the position we're in at the moment. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 jump, jump. Acronyms. 
no, 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 no acronyms. Okay. You know, because if I don't know what it is, they don't know what it is. So, yeah. um, could we do it again? I'm trying to work out what I can put instead of WTO terms because mm. um, government bodies, international agreements. International agreements. All right, you ready? In three, two, one, jump. UKIP's position on Brexit is exactly the same as it's always been from 25 years ago. That is to leave the EU completely, every part of it. And if we leave without a fixed deal with the EU on international terms, that's perfectly acceptable. Bit longer than 10 seconds there, John. Uh, a okay. bit, bit longer. And uh, are, we, are we sure that leaving at any cost is any good? Won't that be a bit of a car crash? No, because the agreements are already in place through the World Trade Organization. Okay. All right, let's, let's just try it one more time. See if we can do it in, in 10 seconds. All right, you ready? Okay. I know this is tough. Yeah. You know. <laughs> are you ready? Three, two, one. Go, John. Okay, Brit, the. No, no. Da, da, da. John, John, John. Calm. Relax. Relax. Breathe deep. Think of, think of me naked behind the camera. That'll relax you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to go now? You've got that image in your brain of me starkers. Yeah? Are you ready? Three, two, one. UKIP's position on Brexit is exactly the same as it's always been. We need to leave the EU and all parts of it. And if that means we can't get a specific deal but leave on international terms, that would be fine. Well done, John! He did it. <laughs> Thank you to Brian Pierce uh, for coming on the show today. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And if you've not been to Rail World uh, Wildlife Haven, make sure you come down. It's right in the middle of Peterborough, uh, just off the town bridge, Fair Meadow Car Park, through the arches. And there it is, a beautiful, beautiful oasis that he and the volunteers have created over 25 years. Come down and visit it. Before we go, uh, I'm just going to leave you with some, some special people. Um, what? No, not you guys. No, you're, oh, yeah, you're a special audience. And thank you for coming down, by the way. Oh, thank you. Very special, some of you. Uh, but no, some special people I bumped into on the streets of Peterborough. Because um, every time I mention the word Brexit, People tend to make a noise, whether it's uh, 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 uh. So what I did was, I went onto the streets of Peterborough and asked people for their Brexit noise. And this is what they said. Make a noise for Brexit. What's the first noise that comes into your mind? Uh. Good bike. Good I'm bike. collecting noises for breakfast, sir. What, what's your Brexit noise? The first sound that comes into your head. Brexit noise is leave. What about you, madam? What's your Brexit noise? Same as me, as me husband, leave, yes. Aha! Yes, leave and a cup of tea. <laughs> so, if I had to say, think of a noise for Brexit, what comes to mind? Hmm. Ah! <laughs> ah! Whoa! <laughs> ah! Ah, whoa! What noise? What noise? What noise for Brexit? What would your noise be? My noise for. My, my noise. <laughs> <laughs> Again? Again? <laughs> Can you beatbox that? <laughs> <laughs> the first noise that comes into your head when you think of Brexit. So as you can see, everybody has got a noise for Brexit, uh, some of them quite rude, so apologies for the language, I know some of you are of a certain age and, you know, a certain disposition, so I'm not looking at anybody in particular, but uh, before we go, there's just time to hear what the audience has to say. We've called it Reprobate Corner. I think Peterborough needs to be uh, promoted. It's a beautiful city. It's got beautiful things in the city. The There's a country park and now this. I'm, I'm surprised because I've never been here before. Not, well, not since this has been here. And uh, I think it's absolutely wonderful. And I'm going to bring the grandchildren here to uh, see it. Now, what do you think of the show? What show? We need people like you, Paul. Me? You. Me? Yes, you, to promote the city. We need it badly. Impressed with the show or not? Yeah, great show. Yeah? Yeah. You come again? Yeah, definitely. You sure? Yeah, go on. Can't pay you as much next time. Oh, uh, well, I won't bother then. <laughs> People's got a voice now, we've got a channel, we've got a show. What do you think? About time two. Yay! Yes. We are the forgotten city. Three cheers for Peterborough! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray!
Thank you. And that is just about it for the show. Uh, thank you for coming along and being a great audience. Thank you very much. We don't know which way Brexit's going to go. We don't know whether the deal that's on the carpet today that has been agreed will be agreed, whether we'll leave, whether we'll stay, whether we'll get a better deal or a worse deal. We don't know what effect it's going to have on Peterborough. But this is the Paul Stainton Peterborough video thingy on PBC. And whatever happens, we'll continue to talk about it. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much.